This is 22 Magnum versus 22 Long Rifle Snubby Gel Test 1. This video was inspired by our recent Smith & Wesson Model 351 PD versus series. In that series, one of the firearms we compared that 351 against was the Ruger LCR in 22 Long Rifle. In today's video, we are shooting CCI Maxi Mag Varmint Edition ammunition. These are 40 grain jacketed hollow point rounds. What we are comparing that against is not a different 22 Magnum ammunition, but instead a 22 long rifle ammo, the CCI Stanger. This is a 32 grain copper jacketed hollow point ammunition. The reason for this is, at least out of our two particular firearms, with these per two particular ammunitions, we have got extremely similar velocity numbers maybe seven feet per second difference on average. This made us wonder, if the velocity is so similar, will we get expansion with one or the other? And if so, how much? We previously did a water jug test of these ammos and firearms. We saw excellent expansion and performance out of the one 22 Magnum round we fired, while the 22 Stanger round we tried went completely through two jugs and was lost to the void with zero evidence of hollow point expansion that we could see on video. Will we see that same behavior here today against our block of clear ballistics 10% FBI grade ballistics gel? Let's hit the range and put these two ammos and firearms to the test and see if we can try and answer that question. And now, let's hit the range. Ready. All right, here we go, three shots. I'm gonna try to do the top of the gel. I don't know if I will succeed. Here we go. Okay. with our GoPro here real quick and we have I would say consistent penetration depth we can see evidence of hollow point expansion on all three rounds I will cut these out later let's flip our block over and we will try this again with the Ruger LCR I think one interesting thing... You want to shoot in the same side? Uh, yeah, so we can compare the okay. distance they oh, go. Okay, gotcha. As you can see, look at the powder from the... Yeah. There's unburnt powder in the face of the gel. Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. This is 22 long rifle with CCI Stanger ammo. I'm going to try to hit the top third of the block again here we go okay let's see how we did Okay. Oh, interesting. Well, this one I saw go in. I got it on film. This one here? Yeah, the farthest one. And that had no, almost no... No no expansion at no all on expansion. that one. It looked like one went along this right side. And... Did I just miss with the other one? We might need to take one more shot. Maybe you only hit it once? Alright, uh, well I think one went out the edge. One's captured. I must have missed it with one. Let's fire one more at it so we can try to capture All right. at least two of them. We're going to fire one more here. I must have missed it. Let me know when you're ready. Ooh. Ready. Oh, 
Okay, yep. Stuck right in the middle. It actually has hollow point expansion on that one. So we actually see, let me get my tape measure. This, it's this one right here. This, this one right here? Yes. And then this one right here? Yes. Which is at you want me to... eight to nine inches. Seven, seven and a half to nine inches. This side, it's really clear. So you think that they are penetrating, over penetrating because they didn't expand that one? Oh, well, I wouldn't say over penetrating, but I would say we're seeing mixed results in terms of expansion. And now let's get to the conclusion to today's video. I'm not sure if we have enough data to say one way or the other if a 22 Magnum Snubby is any better than a 22 Long Rifle Snubby or vice versa. But I do think we got some very interesting information today that reaffirms the commonly held belief that if you're going to carry a rim fire firearm for personal protection and you need to use it, you'll need to make all of your shots count. All of them. With the CCI Maxi Mag out of our snub nose revolver, well, I think we had excellent marketing material worthy hollow point expansion for that ammo out of our snub nose revolver. We had what I'd consider very underwhelming penetration of between six and seven inches. Many people are probably commenting right now, speculating how something like denim or a winter coat in front of that might affect penetration depth to a more negative degree. For our CCI stangers, out of the Ruger LCR. While we had slightly better penetration, one thing we saw was inconsistent to non-existent hollow point expansion. Of the four rounds we fired into the block, we were only able to see what I'd call decent expansion evidence in one round. It just so happens this one round is also one where we had an impact from a round nose lead projectile later in the day, probably compromising these results to some degree. With the CCI Stangers having so far what I'd consider the highest velocity out of our various 22 long rifle ammos we've tested out of the stub nose revolver, getting no evidence of consistent hollow point expansion begs the question, is there a 22 long rifle hollow point ammo that does yield consistent hollow point expansion out of a snub nose revolver? With ammo like our CCI Mini Mag Varmint, that we have got ex excellent reliability and accuracy with in the past. We've got zero hollow point expansion and penetration in the seven to nine inch range when fired from our LCP2 and 22 long rifle. With a segmenting hollow point ammunition like a Winchester varmint, we see that segmentation happen, but is that damage done by those pedals enough? I'm not so sure. Without excellent shot placement, I'm not so sure if those rounds have much stopping power on something beyond a squirrel sized target out of a snub nose revolver. With a lead round nose flat point like say Federal Punch, a lead round nose like say Federal Auto Match, or say a copper plated target round like Mini Mag, we see a penetration that sometimes is in 14 to 16, 16 inches and in many cases the projectile can pass completely through the block. In these cases, we see clean 22 caliber holes chew through the block with little evidence of damage beyond that 22 caliber wound channel. Unless you're hitting something critical, one or two laser drilled holes through your target might not be of immediate value to you. This is where shot placement and multi-shot placement is key when it comes to a rimfire firearm that you carry for personal protection, home defense, or concealed carry purposes. Unless you have that one shot Annie Oakley skill, it's probably going to take at least a few rounds in critical areas to stop a threat before it can harm you. Luckily, 22 firearms tend to lend themselves to putting multiple rounds on target accurately and in quick succession. For some firearms, the challenge is finding ammo you can reliably do that with. Not all ammo is created equal, especially where rimfire ammo is concerned. If you're going to carry a rimfire firearm for protection, make sure you have confirmed 
Your ammo works reliably as can be out of your firearm. You are familiar with how to quickly and safely handle any failures you might encounter and that you can put your first shot and your follow-up shots quickly and efficiently on target. A 22 can be an excellent protection option if you find what is reliable and accurate out of it. Hit the range often, and don't fall for the comment traps on the internet that claim some magical spring setup will make everything work perfectly. Well anyway, we hope you found this video useful and you're looking forward to our next one. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a good day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So Freddy gets his biscuits.